Hello and welcome. This is my workshop. Uh, I'm Colin Scott Thompson and then today I'd like to talk to you about the toggles. Your main toggles, your reserve toggles and common misinterpretations on how they should be set. Traps that people seem to fall into quite constantly and little tweaks that you can make in order to keep your toggles in place until it's time to use them. Having a toggle flying off before you're ready to grab them can lead to some inconveniences for you. So let's see if we can learn something today. When I position my toggles into the container, notice how I'm positioning it so that it's got that fold. As it comes out, it's going to be open. So just one or two times you need to do that and afterwards it will have a memory as I come down here, I'll actually split the two apart just to not have them bulked up one on top of the other. In this example, can you notice the error? One of these brakes is incorrectly set. Lower control lines nicely tucked away with three little keepers. At first glance, they look pretty good. This is a frequent misunderstanding when you're setting your brakes and you're distracted. The control line is running down inboard. The toggle is holding the control line in place. When this line loads up, it will transfer its load, pulling the toggle into the guide ring. The guide ring is stitched down with a nice substantial tape. It's not going to go anywhere. Okay, toggle is set. This one, at first glance, it might appear to be good, but actually it's set above the guide ring. So when this one loads up, it transfers the energy from the line to the toggle and the toggle is transferring its energy to this little tape that's just stitched on there to keep the nose of the toggle in place. It's not designed to take a huge amount of load so it won't be unusual to find this ripped off and of course when it does rip off that's going to go to full drive so looking up during your spinning malfunction you'll see two toggles sitting in place and it's very difficult to notice that one is actually off this exact situation has resulted in me needing to replace cutters on cypresses because people eventually cut away and they had a poor emergency procedure couldn't find the reserve ripcord and the cypress saved their life so the ball started rolling with a misinterpretation of setting it above the guide ring. Please be sure to always go underneath the guide ring and pull on the canopy side of the control line to see, yes, it's sitting on the toggle in a good place. And however you have your lower support for your toggle, cinch it down, fold up, and pop it through keepers. If they're extra extra long you could make a fold. If you only have two you could make a fold. Depends on the length of your lower control line and that varies depending on the canopy style. If you have particularly long lower control lines you could always introduce a fold. In this case it's an elastic keeper. By squeezing the riser it will open up the keeper and you'll get that in and then the bottom end can go in. I'd like you to try and imagine during a deployment, and you'll see in the small video of the eight-way team from France, the cameraman opening. If you leave the lower control line around, this is going to be acting like a cowboy with his lasso in a rodeo show. The chance of it whipping around and doing that could lead to some inconvenience for you thinking that you are being conscientious. And you say, oh, he 
stow my lower control line. Okay, you stow your lower control line, but how do you stow it? If you take this and pull it through, that's a little tricky, so watch this. The part on the end of the toggle can be used. If you think that is stowing your lower control line, you could be in for a big surprise because again that's large enough to whip around and leap over the top and again flaring your canopy with that tied up it's going to take some serious skills lower control line supports if you're running a dacron line it's going to be uh, quite tight inside if it was a long lower control line in Dacron, I would definitely not double fold it. I would keep it as, as thin as possible like that. But when I get the, the choice, here's a canopy that's set up for going into service. The lower control line and the central control line, as I call it, have been modified. The main suspension lines are Dacron because we can afford the space, the volume in the container and the, uh, the advantage of Dacron giving you some shock absorbing during the opening, more forgiving for the pack job and you get a tremendous life out of the Dacron lines. But when I need to stow my lower control line, this particular one is extra long. So with a small diameter spectra line, my choice of spectra is because it handles folding better than the Vectran does. My Vectran central control line, definitely because I'm exposing it to the slider friction and heat, and I don't want that shrinking the Dynama line and causing the canopy to change its character during the openings as the brakes get shorter and shorter. But the lower control line is not being exposed to the friction from the slider, so it's fine to be like that. But my extra long lower control line in this case would be a real mission if it was in Dacron or come to <laughs> mention that if it was in thousand pound Vectran. We'll deal more with this during the line workshop, but as far as the toggle is connected, you can imagine if it was Vectran continuous all the way down to your toggle, I would cut the Vectran loop it back on itself to create a set point, the appropriate size. And instead of running a heavier line, I'd run that 750 Dyneema, far superior. When I see how some of them are coming from the factory, the lower control line is just so bulky and Vectran being a looser weave doesn't like to be doubled over like this and you often have the line hemorrhaging out the side and it looks rough in a very short period of time. This set point as well, of course, would be modified just purely by adding another couple of stitches further down, closer to cinch up that hole to about 22 millimeters instead of what appears to be, I'm guessing, 35 millimeters. Okay, we don't want this having the possibility to jump through so easily like this one does okay, compared to here. It's, it's still got some breathing space. We don't want it so small that it sticks on, but that's that. If you have a riser without any supports for the lower control line, it's not an excuse to leave them dangling around until you can get your riser modified. You could always slip this in just enough coming in from the top my fingers just holding it in place and then I put the toggle up inside which helps to hold it in place. 
that's securing my lower control line. It's an adequate technique. The reason I'm coming in from the top is because as my toggle comes off, that's going up faster than I'm going down. If I were to have the classic Velcro toggles, yes, you need to be a little bit more cautious with your lower control line. I would want to be using the heavy finished Dyneema lower control line, not the super soft one. If possible, first part of my toggle goes down, the lower control line is stowed, not coming in contact with the hook and the rest of the toggle goes down. And notice the tongue hanging off the end. That break is set. And so that toggle is going to be sitting in place nice and patiently waiting for me to take it off when it's time. Of course, when I take it off, I'm not using a pull down technique. I'm peeling the Velcro off. Not many people are using Velcro on main toggles anymore not nearly as popular as the tuck tabs and these styles but you're in for a big surprise if you use your reserve one day and you use the same technique as you would with this pulling straight down with hardly any effort and suddenly you have velcro that sticks like snot to a schoolboy's lip understand your equipment rehearse on the ground know the technique that is appropriate to allow the toggle to come off progressively peeling it off With this model here, the lower control lines are quite long. It's not an issue. You can deal with that. Notice the extra stitching to choke off this top keeper. I'm pushing my toggle in just enough so that my set point is sitting in the appropriate place on the toggle. With this particular model, the top of the keeper is there so it stops the toggle look where the grommet is look where the guide ring is it almost obliges you to push this in too deep and if you push it in too deep there's a chance that that set point is going to jump over the grommet and if it does it's going to lock up there if that happens you'll be a member of a club that is uh, increasing numbers so please be tuned in when you're setting your brake the control line coming down the inboard sits against the guide ring. The lower keeper has some extra stitches to snug that up as well. Flip the riser over. In this case, it's the Type 8 risers. I make a fold, come in from the top and down. And that's what we've got. So with this riser as it sits inside the container you can imagine let me just drop these off for a moment you can imagine if the riser cover were to come open and my lower control line is in the lowest possible point if that riser came open my toggle's not exposed everything's still protected this toggle is set in correctly. The control line is attached to the toggle using the short cut technique. And it's also pushed in too deep. So as I pull this off, potentially, when this starts to release, the set point holds on to the control line and it disappears. Pulling on that with nothing attached to it is going to be tricky getting a nice even flare. I'm coming just past the mark and exit the tool. I grab the tail end of the line and draw it back through. I want the top of the loop to the mark to be about six and a half centimeters. Okay, so that's going to be just visible from the knot. 
okay and that loop there is big enough so that I can get my toggle fitted of course always going the long way round And when this is sitting in place, the knot is unlikely to interfere with the guide ring. If you made that knot further up, you might find it irritating because it would be snagging on the guide ring as you were flying. It's, it's not going to be a groundable defect, but it's a, an irritation. Okay. And that set point is on the large side, so cinching it down just a little so that it's not possible to have this jumping over and snagging on the other side of the grommet that wouldn't be good it's not unusual people tend to set the brakes on some equipment you're almost obliged to push the toggle in too far on this particular riser it's restricted and how far you can go because the keeper is placed in a perfect position the end stops you from pushing the nose of the toggle up too far so that set point is always going to be sitting on the most rigid part of the toggle notice that toggle sitting flat because it's been packed nice and flat during the pack job this one when the risers were placed into the container the handle was folded up so when the parachute opens and it's exposed it's easier to grab you can grab that and pop the brake off this one is a bit more fiddly to get into so if you're in a hurry it might take you a bit longer so simply introducing a fold when you place the riser into the container this crease will disappear and you'll form two new ones which will mean the toggle sits open better with this toggle it's been reinforced another frequent thing you find the central piece in here is hot knifed and frequently we find the pieces sticking out the sides are quite sharp so if you use this high-tech tool snip off you can get very close with it it works great so that when this is being set and unset it does not snag on the fibers of the brake line the other thing that's happened here is that just a little bit further up from the entry some extra stitches have been added to choke the keeper it gives this nose of the toggle more resistance on this particular riser the bottom end is nice and snug so no action is taken this is going to have a canopy with longer lower control lines fitted to it so I've added an extra support loop parachute to France this magnificent toggle very low profile tuck tabs tucking down so if you had a strike from the slider it wouldn't affect the toggle at all it wouldn't knock it off very low profile and the pin used to lock the control line set point meant you wouldn't have any issues like some of the other ones with snagging on the control line So getting your slider down over this is much easier than on some of the beefier toggles. As you pull the brakes off, it was a very definite technique required. So you wouldn't be pulling down like you would with uh, other tuck tabs that are tucking up. You pull away and away it goes. If I was using one of these, I would use the technique that they recommended from the factory, which is going through and through again, and then into the support. 
put my tuck tabs in and of course always stow my lower control line from the back if you were jumping one of these canopies with the set points that are just tiny of course you could set the brake like that it would be acceptable they did have a little bit of a weak point where the two ends of the tape are stitched in here on uh, a few of them that stitch that held everything together wasn't adequate the end of the tape was too close to the stitch and it would pull out eventually so whenever I have a toggle like that in my hands I'll add an extra line of stitches just underneath the existing one you don't want to go above because it's not going to be doing much and we need a bit of space to put the control line through everything looks perfectly normal here elastic keepers for the lower control line nicely stowed coming in from the top everything hunky-dory what could possibly go wrong as I pull the brake off the set point stays on the toggle toggle size is correct I it's pretty rigid considering it doesn't have too many stitches on it I've stitched a little bit down the bottom here but look at this our lower control line is fine but when we check the set point and I take a measurement 15 millimeters the size of the toggle 13 and then we've got to remember it has some thickness as well if you have problems getting your toggle into your set point on your control line you're going to have problems getting it off solution have these stitches removed pull a little bit of the line from the inside out normally it takes about seven millimeters and then restitch that of course so that your set point loop is the appropriate size this is one of my favorite examples of somebody's DIY solution they were having problems getting the toggle in and having it staying locked up when they were pulling the toggle off so they took a bread knife to the toggle and they chopped it the sides off you can see the difference in those two it was a bit too fluffy so they got their zipper lighter out and barbecued the edge now it's like a saw blade on the sides and it's so soft because there's hardly any material there during the deployment if you had a hard opening it would fold the toggle over and suck it through the guide ring there are many ways of solving problems this is not my favorite but I do love to have it in my collection of exhibit A please don't do this there are no industry standards everybody's free to design whatever they feel is appropriate this is really amusing notice the nose length on this toggle it's getting close to double that of what I call almost standard from a vector how on earth did they come to this idea remember as this toggle is pulling out of the set point it's got a, a lot more friction burning things up potentially on our set point so it's just going to wear things out extra quick why do you think they came to this well the, this particular manufacturer was having a lot of toggle firings quite some time ago I had a customer come in and say every time I go through an opening my brakes are off and they showed me the riser and it was similar to this as the opening happened the toggle fired if you're manufacturing something and pieces are quite often they're, they're hot glued into place or double-sided tape into place first everything is marked of course to be just in the right place 
you put one mark where to put the lower keeper does that keeper go above or below that mark if you had two and you say okay put it in between those two it might be easier for the person operating the machine but no quality control the tuck tab was on the toggle in the same place as always but now that was going to fire every time you went through an opening okay you could always pop it in the wrong way around uh, it might help but what did they do instead of fitting this in the correct place they thought well we can fix this let's make our toggles the longest toggles in the world it's mind-boggling some of the designs out there and sure we can all make mistakes and if you recognize it but look at this the stitch is put in a way that actually you need surgical tools to be able to get into your handle here how bizarre no support for your lower control line so in this case if they were coming over the hill shooting and the war was about to start and we had to jump I would do it like that I'd run it in from the top and then put my tuck tab through and that's going to help to hold it in place it's not going to escape of course as you go through your deployment and you reach up and you can eventually get your hand in there you pull the brakes off we're fine what were they thinking so the toggle and the keepers the relationship they have if that's a real sloppy fit and the top keeper is a real sloppy fit the chances of having this fly off during a deployment are increased we can fix this when we make this keeper more cinched in when we make this keeper tighter we're going to have to make sure that the toggle doesn't feel like a marshmallow we need something a bit more rigid using different thread color just so you can see a little better the top keeper has been choked off the toggle has been stitched over to make it more rigid so that it's slightly easier for me to squeeze that nose of the toggle into the tighter keeper the pin retaining groove has had another line of stitches added just alongside to cinch it up with this particular manufacturer sadly they put the support tape right on the other side so in order to do that you've got to pop off one side to get the the stitches done luckily in this case it was al already falling off anyway so no biggie but this is going to help during a bit of a funky opening if the toggle is flicked around it stays in place for you waiting patiently until you decide it's time to come off notice how the guide ring is attached it's a nice substantial piece of tape of course four inches from the top of the riser to the toggle to the guide ring good strong tapes the rings in both these cases are stainless steel rings with no apparent join there are rings out there that are cadmium plated which are absolutely fine the cadmium plating eventually will rub off if you go get it wet and don't desalinate and dry they'll start rusting up on you uh, for example not very nice looking they're going to tear up your control lines real quick so rather just pop some new ones on other styles at first glance might be apparently okay until you rotate it and find that this is a weld mark these can be problematic the weld 
is a weak point. If you're having hard openings, it might give you some problems. These are amazing to find on a parachute. Some rings for uh, keys or artwork. The sharp edges that we would typically get on these D-rings would eventually cut through even if you had a really strong tape here, they'd, they'd be rubbing and eating through from the inside and separate eventually if you didn't have your eyes open. You could have really strong rings, excellent rings, but not mounted on good tape. Type 3 tape is fabulous material, but not for everything. We use it to attach your lines to your canopy, but having all the control line force loading up on that piece of type 3 tape, potentially, if you have a bit of a slam opening, it's just going to separate. So that's the cherry on top after having an explosive opening, one toggle flies off and tangles up with your slider. So try and make sure you're using good materials on your equipment. Various types of brake settings. This one that comes through first and then the toggle goes in and locks into the loop that is on the riser itself. We used to use these rings on almost everything. Now with the standard, what we consider standard now, you wouldn't use that same ring because there's a chance it's going to go right through. Okay, So you only use these larger toggles with this style ring. If your control line is Dacron, you could have the end looped over and stitched, or if you're not having a sewing machine available, the way to do it is through, through, and then you tie a knot. And what I prefer to do is take that and drop it down through. Notice where the mark is. That's me ready for action. So if I'm setting this brake, the Velcro goes down and the lower control line is stowed in this neat little pocket. Notice there's no top keeper for this. There is no reason to have one because the, the toggle is held down with Velcro. That's what's holding your toggle in place. In this case, the set point is an eyelet built into one continuous line running all the way down to the toggle. It's absolutely fine like that. But as I said, the lower control line, when it's a Vectran, or in this case an HMA, it doesn't cope very well with the folding and the constant handling. A bit more tricky to get in, but that's, that's enough. That keeps it clean. If it was my choice, I would change this. Looping the control line like that and adding a separate piece of Dyneema line is my preferred technique for lower control lines. Always going the long way around. This is a longer one and it's got the three supports. Neat and tidy. When setting up your lower control line to attach to your toggle, if it hasn't arrived from the factory already 
looped and stitched, you can choose where to put it. But the factory will have a mark. Depending on which manufacturer it is, that mark should be either here, visible, or at the end of the loop. If you confuse the manufacturer's instructions and put the mark in the wrong place, you will end up having the brake set at a different setting, which is not the end of the world, but somebody's gone to a lot of effort to make this parachute fly for you the best possible way. So try and follow the guidelines. If all else fails, read the manual. When I'm setting up a brake, in this case, it's similar to performance design, so that mark has to be seen just above the knot. So I'll exit past the line and actually do the finger trapping first. That way, when I come to tie my knot, the entry point for the finger trapping is hidden underneath or hidden inside the zone of the knot and there's less chance of the inside section hemorrhaging out. So what's up with the colors? Some are red, some are yellow, blues, pinks get a load of that. That was my younger days. It would be great if we could have an industry standard. Yellow toggles, kind of we have on the mains. Reds, most of us use on reserves. It's not across the board. So if I find a toggle on the reserve that is yellow, I'll put a red tape over the top of it. There are some manufacturers that run that standard, red toggles on the reserve, yellow on the main, and then when they have a customer that orders a harness in red in order to not have the toggle going camouflage, I'm guessing, against the riser, they use yellow toggles. Now, hang on a minute. We've just forgotten why we did that in the first place. Having two canopies with identical commands when you're dazed and confused, brushing towards a planet and you happen to have both canopies above your head, it makes your decision making a lot more of a challenge. So having a distinct color would be great. In order to have the toggle, if you imagine a red webbing, to have it not going camouflage on you, I'll stitch an orange tape over it or you could use white, something that's distinct and won't be confused for your main command. As you can see, toggles come in all shapes and sizes. One of the first ones I used was similar to this. Another one looked more like a worry beads or rosary beads on my T10. Through the ages, as toggles have developed, this was coming with the swift square reserve, the five cell reserve, but it was converting from around reserve so it had no toggles. These would be stitched onto the riser using cotton thread. Other manufacturers like Rigging Innovations had a small toggle with a little bit of Velcro and they were actually made to be stitched on and the nose to keep it secure. As we've gone through the ages, toggles end up being real minimalists i um, not a big fan of these designs. Call me old fashioned, but good old Velcro with a, an increased strength by having this extra tongue on there is really going to hold your toggle in place. Whatever toggle you're using on your equipment, make sure it's going to stay secure until you choose to remove it. You've seen how that can be modified. Avoid having one that resembles a marshmallow. We don't want that. If you're having problems setting it, this modification is not necessarily the ideal one. It's one of the ways of doing it, but not what I would recommend. However, your toggle is secured to your risers, whether it's Velcro or tuck tabs or a pin, 
they all work great if they're properly maintained. Another way of doing it is with uh, press studs. Press studs have been used for many years and quite frankly on some industrial type operations like tandems, it's my favorite choice. Press studs just go on forever and it allows you to really have a trouble-free season with your toggles. No Velcro changing. Velcro is great stuff, but it does require some maintenance, a bit more than this. And you can actually modify your main risers on your sport equipment with a press stud. If you're having problems getting a slider down on your mini risers, one of the big advantages of replacing the lower control line with a Dyneema is a good way of keeping that, that area behind the toggle low profile. If you're running a heavy Vectran, it's going to be more tricky getting the slider grommet past that area. So by reducing the volume of line, it's going to make it easier to get your slider down if you choose to bring your slider down. I hope you've managed to find some useful information in this video. If it's been valuable to you, great. Press the like button, thumbs up. If you thought it was rubbish, give it two thumbs down. Leave some comments. I'll try and get to answer them as soon as possible. I'm not 18, so I won't do it in five minutes. Um, hit the subscribe button. Press the notification bell. Hopefully, I get to make another video one of these days soon. All the best until then.